From Caterpillar to Butterflies, episode 16, how to get ish done when you're feeling unmotivated. Welcome to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies personal growth podcast. Just like the caterpillar is destined to become a butterfly, you too are designed for a beautiful transformation. This is where you go to grow and transform your life. And now, here's your host, certified life coach, Charlene Dior. Hey, hey, this is Charlene, your host of the From Caterpillars to Butterflies personal growth podcast where we talk about all things growth. If it can help you grow, if it can help you improve your life and your situation, we will likely be covering it here. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this episode. As always, it is an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to share with you what I know and what I've learned about growth and life and being the absolute best that we can be and having what we want to have. So with that, I will just jump right into this week's episode. The title is How to Get Ish Done When You're Feeling Unmotivated. How to Get Ish aka stuff done when you are feeling unmotivated. I think we all go through times where we know we have a laundry list of things that we could do or that we should do. And for whatever reason, we just cannot pull ourselves together to get it done. And, you know, sometimes I, I look for a certain block of time in my, in my life or my schedule. And I think, ah, I'm going to have two days to just work on whatever, right? I can't wait to those days, just undivided attention. And you know, one of the things I'm doing now is writing a book and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have two, three solid days just to write on the book. And then those days come and I'm like, oh, I just want to sit here on the couch and watch TV with my dog, (laughs) right? I think we all kind of, kind of find ourselves in that situation. So I wanted to share with you some things that I have learned to do when I'm feeling unmotivated even though I have a ton of ish to get done. So first I just want to talk about, you know, knowing yourself. And I talk about that a lot. I'm such a believer in self-awareness, but it's really kind of critical to know yourself in all facets of yourself. But as it relates to what we're talking about today, you have to know what motivates you and what demotivates you. And when you have a good understanding of this, then the rest really comes easy. I'm gonna share with you things that that I do to motivate myself, but really knowing yourself for yourself will help you create your own customized strategy for for getting motivated when you don't want to get motivated. So, So one thing about me is that I tend to be very introverted. I enjoy alone time. I enjoy just being at home with my dog and and being away from people. But I also know that if I'm in my cocoon for way too long, then I start to get a little like unmotivated. I start to get a little drab or blah. And so I know like it's time for me to get out and socialize and having some, some social events or a friend time on the, on the calendar to help really lift my spirits and get me out of that funk. So if I, I need my alone time, I value it. But if I overindulge in it, even though it, at the time it seems like what I want and need, if I overindulge in alone time, then I'm going to start to feel uninspired and demotivated. So me knowing that about myself and also knowing that there's a delicate balance for me personally between alone time and socialization and fun stuff and hanging with my girlfriends or my family, there's a delicate balance balance there that I have to play. And when you know kind of what that balance is for you, then you can really plan your schedule and your time around that. You know, sometimes I think I just want to go home and do nothing. And that's what I really think I want, but it's not what I need. And so then when I feel myself in this funk feeling demotivated, then I have to go back and and catch up on, on friend time or, or, social time. But if I know for myself that even though in my head, I think I just want to be alone, it's really time for me to get out there, then I can kind of prevent some of the slumps that I find myself in sometimes. So that's just an example of knowing yourself. And so the question that I have here posed for you is that did something change? Did something change in your routine that has made you feel unmotivated? 
or should something be changing? In my case, what I find myself having to do at this point in time is to get out there and purposefully socialize and invite people out. So should something be changing? So really know and understand yourself to get an idea of why you're feeling unmotivated and to be able to circumvent those things going forward in the future. The other question that I have here is, is there something you're avoiding? Are you feeling unmotivated because there's something that you need to be doing, but for whatever reason, you're avoiding it because it scares you, because you're worried about what someone thinks or what someone's going to say, or just for whatever reason, you're avoiding this thing. So step one, and really just will help what would help you in general to stay motivated or to get yourself re-motivated when you find yourself unmotivated, it's just to really know who you are, know yourself, know what demotivates you, know what inspires you, and make sure that you are penciling those things in at the right time. And notice some of the beginning signs of losing your motivation and be able to really snap back, so to speak, more quicker by noticing the signs that I'm starting to get demotivated. Okay, so I need to go do this thing that that motivates me. Um, Okay, so now I'll just go into some of the specific suggestions that I have for you that actually work for me to get motivated again. So one is let music be your friend. Jess Bowen has a quote. He says, music can change lives. Whether you're having a good day or a bad day, the power of music can change one's mood. So let music change your mood. I am a bit of a self-professed slob. (laughs) I don't like to clean. What can I say? But one thing that motivates me to clean is putting on my favorite CD or my favorite playlist. Having that going on, jam into it, doing what seems like a very boring task can help me to be motivated and really gives me a framework in terms of what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be doing it, right? Because if I'm listening to a CD that's an hour long, then okay, I have an hour to to really do what I need to do in the house. So let music be your friend. Know what songs motivate you. Know if certain songs motivate you for certain activities. So you might have songs that really get you in the mood to clean, or you might have songs that really get you in the mood to exercise or to work on your business. So know what songs motivate you. And again, build those songs into your schedule. Turn them on. If you're going to clean up every Saturday, just get up and turn the music on. Don't give yourself time to think about it because when we start to think about things, then we're like, oh, I don't really don't feel like it. Oh, I can't. Oh, I just want us to sit here on the couch. It's Saturday morning. I just want to relax. So just make it a, a habit to just get up, turn the music on and start cleaning before you have a lot of time to, to think about it. Because when we think about things, what we're really doing is giving ourselves an opportunity to talk ourselves out of it. And then that just leads to even more demotivation because now you have a bigger mess and you really don't want to do it. Or you have to play catch up because you've slacked on your diet for so long or your exercise for so long or your business for so long. And you have like to do double, triple duty. And that really kills your motivation then. So number one, let music be your friend. Number two, use intervals. So when I first started learning, I did a... um, walk to run program last year and the way that they teach you to kind of build up to be able to run a 5k is they start you off with intervals so you run for a minute and then you walk for a minute the first week and then the next week you might run for two minutes and walk for one minute and then you just build your you keep building and building and building up so use intervals to help you do things that you're unmotivated to do you might say i'm going to do this for five minutes and then take a break for five minutes or I'm going to do this for 10 minutes and then take a break. Commercials are a great opportunity for you to leverage the power of intervals. Watch your favorite TV show. Don't withhold what you like from yourself. Enjoy your TV show. But when the commercials come on, then get up and clean or get up and do some crunches or get up and call someone, call a potential client or something, right? So use the power of intervals to help you do what you are unmotivated to actually do. 
Number three is seek out inspiration. This might be going and looking at before and after pictures, maybe if you're talking about exercising or something else. <laughs> go look at progress reports, go check up on some of your favorite people or people who inspire you, go check out what they're doing, what they're up to, know what inspires you, and then have those things on hand so that when you're feeling unmotivated, you really don't wanna exercise and you can pull out that inspiration and let it drive you, let it pull you forward. Number four is make yourself accountable to someone. I read a research report that said something to the effect that when someone has an appointment with an accountability partner, the chances of them accomplishing the goal increases to, I think, 95% or 90%, something like that. Being accountable to someone else helps you make progress, even when you don't feel like be making progress, because we have a tendency to honor our commitments to other people more than we honor our commitments to ourselves, right? Like you can tell yourself that you're going to wake up at 5 a.m. and go exercise and you will just hit the snooze button. But if you tell your best girlfriend or your coach or your sister that you're going to meet them at 5 a.m. to exercise, you're less likely to actually leave them hanging. So make yourself accountable to someone. So I record my podcast generally on the weekend. Um, and originally I had some podcast episodes in the bag. Some I was ahead of schedule and then I kind of got got on schedule basically. So I am doing the one for Tuesday generally. Um on the, on the Saturday before, but really that helps me. I'm accountable to my assistant who does the show notes because I can't give them to her on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., right? Like I have to give her time to actually produce it. So being accountable to her, even if it's the last minute on Saturday and I really don't want to do what I want something else to do, or I just want to relax and chill, I'm accountable to her and really I'm kind of accountable to myself and my listeners, but I know that she needs it. So it motivates me to get up and get it done. So be accountable to someone else or to even something. Number five, visualize. That rhymes. <laughs> um, you can leverage the power of visualization to motivate you. See yourself doing the thing, see yourself in the future state of what that thing would bring to you. So see yourself walking into a clean house, see yourself looking a certain way or, or being healthy or whatever. See yourself in the final result. Um, I used to do listen to a guided meditation and it was for working out, for exercising. And so you visualize yourself with with your favorite exercise clothes on and you say to yourself, I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to do that. So you might want to visualize yourself doing something that you really don't enjoy doing, but trick yourself, trick your mind into thinking that you enjoy it and you just can't wait to get it done. And this strategy is more long-term than short-term because it takes time to reprogram your subconscious mind, but you can trick yourself or program yourself into believing that this is your favorite thing to do and you just can't wait. I can't wait to do that. So use visualization to help you. Number six, base your decisions, your actions, your behaviors on your goals and not your feelings. So how many times do we say, I don't feel like doing that. And then because we don't feel like doing it, we don't do it. You know, I know sometimes when I'm exercising and I'm tired, I, I, and I want to quit, right? My, my legs are hurting. My arms are hurting. I'm tired. My, my body is just tired. And I tell myself, Charlene, being tired is not a reason to quit. It's not a reason. Being tired just means you're tired doesn't mean quit. So don't let your feelings direct you. Let your goals direct you. Let the, your goals pull you forward. And the last tip here really is to just do it. Just do it. And it really helps to kind of break things down into bite-sized pieces. What, what looks so overwhelming, it is overwhelming when you look at it 
in the magnitude of what it is, but when you break it down, then it might look more feasible or doable. Um, but you know, the time that we sit and think about things and how oh, I should be doing it, I could be doing it. Why am I not doing it? Oh, I, I suck. We could just get up and get it done. So sometimes you just have to tell yourself, get up and get it done. Just go do it. So that is all I have for you for today's episode on getting ish done, even when you feel unmotivated. So a quick recap, know yourself know what motivates you, know what what demotivates you, stay on top of it, have a theme, uh, let music be your friend, leverage the power of music, leverage the power of intervals, do breaks, five by ones, five by fives, commercial breaks, seek out inspiration when you're feeling in the dumps, go find people, places, things that inspire you. Make yourself accountable to someone or something, to a workout partner, to a coach, to a girlfriend, to an employee, to your boss. Make yourself accountable to someone. Visualize yourself in the end result. Visualize yourself having what you want to have that you're putting off. Visualize yourself being in that final state. Base your decisions off of your goals and not your feelings. Stop letting your feelings live your life for you. And finally, just do it. Just put your big girl panties on and get it done. Hope that helps you. And now, a moment of meditation. If you're not driving, cooking, or doing anything that requires your full attention, take a deep breath and close your eyes as Charlene leads you into an inspiring meditation. Take another deep breath in. And exhale. Bring to mind something that you are feeling unmotivated about doing. And now imagine all the good things that will be achieved as a result of doing that thing. See yourself living in the result of that thing. Now come back to the present moment, knowing all the great things that come from these things that you're feeling unmotivated about doing, and repeat after me. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to achieve those results. I can't wait to live in that truth. I can't wait to do that. I just can't wait. See yourself doing that thing, having a great time. See yourself laughing and smiling. See yourself looking good while doing it. What are you wearing? What does your environment look like? Who's there with you? See yourself laughing and smiling while looking good in a fabulous place with people that you care about doing this thing. And again, say, I can't wait to do that. I am so looking forward to doing that. I can't wait to achieve that. I am really looking forward to achieving that. Put a big smile on your face. Hold your head up high, shoulders back, and say, I can't wait to do that. I am so excited for the opportunity to do that. I can't wait what great things are going to come into my life as a result of doing this thing. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't wait. (sighs) 
see yourself excited. See yourself achieving, accomplishing, doing. I can't wait to do that. You can't wait to do that. And imagine all the great, wonderful things that come from your actions when you do what you need to do, even when you don't feel like it. You're so excited. You can't wait. On the count of three, I want you to open your eyes. Feeling excited and exuberant and expectant about those things on your to-do list that will make your life grander. One, two, three. Open your eyes. Feeling excited. Feeling focused. Feeling disciplined to knock out your to-do list and take this feeling with you today and always and make a commitment to achieve the things that are worth achieving to you. Until next time, grow on purpose. Thanks for listening to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies podcast, your one-stop shop for all things personal growth. For today's show notes and even more tools and resources to help you transform the life you have into the life you love, go to www.fromcaterpillars2butterflies.com.